Hello guys and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we are going to be calculating values of the trigamma function. Uh, that looks just like this and it's actually equal to this expression I have on the right. It's going to be easily derived using uh, the definition of the digamma function and then differentiating with respect to x since this is just the first derivative of the digamma function. Unlike the digamma function, the trigamma function doesn't have an easy way, as I've shown in previous videos, to convert its values to an integral and then solve that way. So you can't actually um, find out the value for any rational number like you can for the digamma function. There's actually only a few special values where you can evaluate it. So let's go ahead and jump right into it. So first off, we know that the, digamma the trigamma function is just the derivative of the digamma function, right? So this gives us a few identities that we can use. First off, we know that digamma of x plus 1 equals digamma of x plus 1 over x. This means that digamma 1 or trigamma of x plus 1 equals trigamma of x minus 1 over x squared, just differentiating on both sides. And this means that once we find some value of x for trigamma of x, we can fill in infinitely many values above x, um, just one space apart. So let's start, um, let's also use our um, reflection formula. So we know that gamma of x times gamma of 1 minus x equals pi uh, cosecant of pi x. And if you take the natural log of this and differentiate, you'll find that digamma of 1 minus x minus digamma of x equals pi cot pi x. And if we differentiate this, we're going to find that digamma of x plus digamma of 1 minus x equals pi squared cosecant squared of pi x. So this identity is going to be very useful to us as well. So let's go ahead and start with the most simple value of the, digamma, of the trigamma function. Let's start with trigamma of 1. So let's just plug this directly into the definition. We can see that this matches up with zeta of 2. And so it's just going to be pi squared over 6. So then if we wanted to figure out trigamma of 2, we could just subtract uh, 1. And we would find that it would be pi squared over 6 minus 1. All right, let's continue on to other values. So trigamma of 1 half is actually a little bit interesting because there's two different ways that we can approach this. First off, we can just plug it into the definition. We can also rewrite this as the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of um, 4 over 2n plus 1 squared. And I'll just bring that 4 outside. This is actually a pretty interesting sum because if we look at it, we have 4 and then 1 over 2n plus 1 squared. Um, in this case, it looks a lot like the zeta function, except the thing is we're missing our even numbers there. So if we want to write out these terms, we would have um, 1 plus 1 over 3 squared plus, or actually let me write it this way. We have 1 plus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared, and so on and so forth, right? So what if we go ahead and add in the terms that are quote-unquote missing, 1 over 2 squared and 1 over 4 squared? So this is going to end up being pi squared over 6, right? But then we're going to subtract out those terms again. So we're going to subtract 1 over 2 squared minus 1 over 4 squared, minus 1 over 6 squared, and so on and so forth. So this means that our sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 2n plus 1 squared is equal to pi squared over 6 minus the sum from n equals uh, 1 to infinity of 1 over 2n squared. But the thing about 2n squared is we can just take out this 2, and we can just write this as 1 fourth sum of 1 over n squared. And we know that this is just pi squared over 6. So what we're going to end up with is pi squared over 6 times 3 fourths, or 
pi squared over 8. And then when we multiply all of this by 4, we're going to get pi squared over 2. That's the answer. Now, another way that we can actually take this on is a little bit more interesting. What if instead of using um, the direct definition, we use some of our identities? So the one that comes to mind is the reflection formula. Since 1 half equals 1 minus 1 half, this works out really nicely for us because we'll get trigamma of 1 half plus trigamma of 1 half equals pi squared cosecant squared of pi over 2. And cosecant of pi over 2 is just 1. So we're, this is just going to be pi squared. And then this is just going to be 2 times trigamma of 1 half. And that was actually a much easier method to solve for trigamma of 1 half. All right. So now we're going to solve for our final value of the trigamma function, because as I said, there's very few, um, but I mean, technically there's infinitely many, but in terms of like unique values that aren't spaced out one from each other, there's very few values that can be expressed in normal terms. So let's look at trigamma of one fourth. All right. So this is a little bit of an interesting value um, since at first it doesn't seem very easy to evaluate it. The first thing we're going to do is write out write it out in its normal uh, notation. And we can also write this as 16 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 4n plus 1 squared. So this one actually we can't evaluate using our little uh, zeta function trick that we used last time. But if we add something else to it, maybe we will be able to. So instead of just trying to use the definition directly here, since clearly this isn't working for us, there's nothing we can really do here, it might actually be a better idea to um, also integrate our other our other identity that we used last time, which was the reflection identity. So if we go ahead and do that, we'll find that trigamma of 1 fourth plus trigamma of 3 fourths is equal to pi squared cosecant squared of pi over 4. Cosecant of pi over 4 is um, square root 2, so this is just going to be 2 pi squared. All right, so it's looking pretty good. However, all we're kind of missing right now is we want to figure out, we still don't know trigamma of 3 fourths, so this doesn't really help us that much. However, there's a pretty common system of equations that'll show up in lots of different situations, which is where you have a plus b and a minus b as another equation. So let's see if we can calculate trigamma of 1 fourth minus trigamma of 3 fourths. And instead of using an identity here, let's go ahead and use our sum notation. So I'm just going to go ahead and skip straight to this step. So we're going to get 16 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of 1 over 4n plus 1 squared minus 1 over 4n plus 3 squared, right? That's just because that comes from this uh, trigamma of 3 fourths. And if we go ahead and write out the terms here, we're going to see that this is going to be 16 times 1 over 1 squared minus 1 over 3 squared plus 1 over 5 squared minus 1 over 7 squared. Essentially, we're just alternating with our terms here uh, only over the odd numbers. And that's actually a really famous result since this is equal to 16 times the sum from n equals 0 to infinity of negative 1 to the n over uh, 2n plus 1 squared. That's just equal to 16g. So we can go ahead and plug that in right here. And so this is going to be 16g. So if we go ahead and add these two equations, we're going to find that 2 digamma of 1 fourth equals 2 pi squared plus 16g. Or trigamma of 1 fourth equals pi squared plus 8g. And if we subtract the equations, we'll find that trigamma of 3 fourths is going to be equal to pi squared minus 8g. And those are the last values of the trigamma function that we'll actually be able to calculate directly. So anyway, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and um, yeah, hopefully you'll find some uses for these values of the trigamma function. In general, we don't see it that much in integrals since we have that 
squared on the bottom that doesn't usually show up but I'm sure there are some situations where you might find it and these values might come in handy so anyway I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you next time